Amen. No niin, on aika aloittaa. Tervetuloa seuraamaan tätä mediainfoa, hyvät katsojat ja median edustajat. Tämän tilaisuuden kieli on englanti ja tulkkausta ei ole järjestetty, joten pyydämme esittämään kysymykset ystävällisesti englanniksi, mikäli vain mahdollista. Koska aikataulu on tiukka, niin pyydän myös, että pyydät, kysytte vain yhden kysymyksen kerrallaan ja sitten pidätte kysymykset ytimekkäinä. All right, estimated ladies and gentlemen of the media and viewers, we are pleased to welcome you to the press conference of uh, Minister of Family Affairs and Social Services, Aki Vindén, and Commissioner for Health and Food Safety, Stella Kiriakides. At first, we'll hear the key points from both Minister Linden and Commissioner Kiriakides, after which the journalists will have a possibility to ask questions. Without further ado, Minister Linden, I'm pleased to give the floor to you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen in the, in the press. It is a great pleasure to host Commissioner Kiriakides today. We had a very good discussion in the morning of a really broad range of, of different topics, including situation in Ukraine and how EU countries uh, and of course Finland can um, manage the situation here. Here we talked about COVID-19 situation now, nowadays, and we talked about uh, mental health, uh, different EU programs, cancer, uh, and and the situation uh, that has changed the, as Commissioner said, paradigm in the whole EU level uh, when we now see EU on the health scale as a whole. Uh, different member states, are, uh, they have the same problems. They are, they are, uh, the COVID has, has changed the situation and now the situation in Ukraine and the huge amount of refugees in different countries has made it so that we uh, solve common problems. Of course, healthcare in each country still is a, a national thing, and there are different kinds of, of, of health service systems, but we have more and more things we now deal, deal together. As we know, the situation in Ukraine is, is very difficult, and, and I want to underline, uh, of course, that Finland strongly condemns Russia's attack on, on Ukraine, and maybe the, we will face a situation in Europe that, that even 10 million refugees will, will come to different countries. In Finland, we still, still have an uh, uh, official number of, of 11,000 registered uh, refugee, refugees, but, but may, maybe we have another 10,000 here, and, and even more comes every, every, every week. Uh, not so much about the corona situation now, now here. Uh, it's not over, over, but, but we discussed about the uh, vaccines, uh, for instance, that, that should we have the fourth dose, dose uh, at the same age in different European countries. Now the Finnish decision is 80 years, but, but some European countries think that, that lower age, 70, even in Germany, they had talked about 60, 60 years. But I will give the word now to Commissioner Kuriakides, because you are the main person now of, of this day here. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank Minister Linden for inviting me to Finland today. And as he said, we were able to have a, a, a very important exchange of views on matters of, a, of our common interest. Um, in these very difficult times, we're seeing really the best of uh, EU solidarity and values uh, with the member states and civil society partners all joining uh, together to warmly welcome the refugees from Ukraine and to provide them the support that they need. Uh, I look forward to uh, exactly seeing this again today when I will have the opportunity to visit a refugee reception center later on with the minister. 
I want to express my gratitude and the Commission's gratitude to Finland and the Finnish people for showing your generosity and your solidarity uh, in these difficult times uh, of war uh, to Ukrainian refugees. Finland has also sent much needed medical and shelter supplies to Ukraine and its neighbors. We must stay united and coordinated uh, and we stand by Finland and all the member states to help in every possible way. When it comes to health care, our immediate priority is to treat those in urgent need of specialized hospital uh, care. And as I have already um, uh, shared with the minister, we have already secured over 10,000 beds in various member states for the treatment of patients uh, coming from Ukraine when the member states' health systems are under pressure. And we expect uh, the pace uh, of these transfers to increase in the coming days and weeks. We are also putting into place a system for routine health checks and vaccination for those fleeing the war, especially for children. And this week, we launched a new system for donations from the private sector to Ukraine and its neighbors for essential goods. And I would invite all companies and businesses in Finland to take part in this solidarity effort and donate for the many in need, whether medical products or the other necessities. As part of this, we have secured over 200,000 doses of diphtheria and tetanus vaccines for Ukraine, and another 70,000 which are going to go to Czechia, Slovakia, and Moldova as part of the Union Civil Protection Mechanism. Of course, this was also a subject of our discussions this morning with the Minister. We cannot uh, and will not forget the psychological impact of the war and the trauma of war and refugees and we are currently mobilizing EU for Health uh, funding to set up a network of Ukrainian-speaking me mental health professionals, as well as to uh, increase the trauma support capacity on the ground. In the midst of this um, tragedy, COVID-19 pandemic is still with us. We have today vaccinated over uh, more than 72% of the EU population. This is a major success. Uh, this is an indication and the strength of European solidarity. The EU vaccine strategy is European solidarity at its best, but it still means that there are many unvaccinated that we need to reach. And the situation in Ukraine is only making these challenges uh, more urgent. We must not lower our guard as the virus and its possible variants could lead to large outbreaks. Here, I want to congratulate Finland for a very successful vaccination program and um, where over 80% of the population has been fully vaccinated. And I strongly believe that a European approach, as Minister Linden has said, with um, the rapid administration of boosters is the most effective way forward. And this was a clear message that came from the European Health Minister's Council meeting held in Brussels earlier in the week. Uh, we need to have uh, a common message because this builds up trust in vaccination. Um, and I look forward to working with the Minister and all the Member States to continue this. And last but definitely not least, I discussed with Minister our shared priorities, the new upcoming health data space, uh, and also the implementation of Europe's Beating Cancer Plan. Uh, Europe's Beating Cancer Plan is Europe's plan. It is a plan which is a broad and ambitious, a holistic plan, with the first time with a budget of over 4 billion euro. We both agree uh, that Europe can and must do more to bring hope to patients and their families and their carers. Um, and I very much look forward to visiting the, the Comprehensive Cancer Center of the University of Helsinki today with the minister 
uh, and hope to cooperate very closely for common actions in the future. So, Minister, thank you once again for your kind invitation, your hospitality, and you're welcome to Finland, and I look forward to working with you in these challenging times. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Linden, and thank you very much, Commissioner. So it's time to hear from the journalists now. So if you have a question, please raise a hand and I'll give you the floor. Please remember to state aloud your name and media before you ask your question. Let's hear the first one. Uh, the mic is open for you, Julia Blomqvist. Uh, good morning. This is Julia Blomqvist from London Media. Media. Um, I have a question about uh, tuberculosis. I have understood that uh, tuberculosis is a more common disease in Ukraine than in many other European countries. Do you see the risk that the war in Ukraine and the refugee crisis could worsen the tuberculosis epidemic across Europe. Thank you, Julia. Please, Commissioner, or would... As I have said, we are working very closely and across the member states in order to reinforce the vaccination campaigns, both for COVID and for childhood vaccines and others for uh, Ukrainian refugees uh, coming into the member states. At this moment in time, I believe that what is important is that we provide the security and the safety to all those millions of uh, refugees fleeing Ukraine. This needs to be our priority and at the same time provide the health care that they uh, need uh, on arrival in the EU. And we're already doing this working not only with the neighboring member states but with all the member states so that they have uh, the vaccinations that are needed both for childhood diseases and for COVID uh, in order to be able to further um, uh, support uh, all those, all, all those uh, fleeing Ukraine. But at the moment our priority needs, needs to be focused on giving these people fleeing the support and the safety that they need. Thank you. Commissioner, would you like to say a word? Minister? Mm -hmm. The question was very uh, important. Uh, I think it's uh, theoretically so, so that there is uh, some small risk, but I have the just same opinion as, as Commissioner Kyriakides here, that now it's, it's time to help the people, to allow them to come to our countries, and then it's, it's the second or third question to begin, uh, for instance, screening for tuberculosis. Uh, in, when I was a young student, when I started studying, so it was that time in Finland even quite common tuberculosis, and every, every student had to go to a lung, lung x-ray picture at that time. So we are ready, ready to take account these all risks, but, but I think it's now more a theoretical risk and not, not really a, a practical risk. But, but we must be aware. Thank you. Let me just add something. Absolutely. Uh, from the very beginning, ECDC uh, issued recommendations to all the member states uh, on uh, how to deal with uh, uh, those uh, refugees coming into their member states, both at the community level and at the hospital level, in terms of health care screening, vaccinations, so that all member states would know uh, how they should be able to receive uh, those refugees in order to be proactive. So we have been uh, dealing with this from day one. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question comes from uh, Sara Rigatelli. Hello, this is Sara Rigatelli from the Finnish Broadcasting Company. So there are very, very many cases of COVID in Europe at the moment because of Omicron BA2 variant, but basically all the restrictions have been given up. How do you comment on this? Thank you. And please, Minister Linden. Well, now the situation, we just had the meeting on Tuesday, European health, health ministers, uh, and I had many uh, discussions there, there with my colleagues of the restrictions uh, in, in COVID-19 in, in Europe. And I think that mostly we are now in the 
same level. So uh, I mean, with that, uh, that we do not have any strict uh, restrictions uh, in any uh, European country. In Austria, there is mandatory to use uh, masks in 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 in, in public public places. But for, for instance, in Nordic countries. Uh, Sweden, Sweden. When I visited there, I did not see uh, <laughs> nearly any 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 mask. So there are some some differences, uh, but, but uh, I think that uh, because the vaccination level is uh, quite good in in even whole Europe, Finland is on, on, there there on the top level, not best one, but but uh, in in the in the group of, of the best. So. I don't see now any big risk uh, here uh, with the Ukrainian uh, refugees uh, because uh, they are mostly uh, young people, women, women, children, and so. But but of course we must be aware of this this risk also. Uh, thank you for that question, and you're absolutely uh, correct. Cases are on the rise in Europe. We have seen um, almost a 10% increase in the last week, and mostly in those over 65 years old. Uh, however, the number of hospitalizations has remained stable across the member states, um, although we are watching this very, very closely, uh, particularly in the coming weeks as we may have more uh, cases in the older age groups. Um, the mortality rate in the EU continues to decrease. I think it's decreasing by over 20% in the last week. Um, we are dealing with the uh, sub-Omicron variant and the Omicron variant now. Uh, and the message needs and continues to be a very clear message. The vaccines that we have approved uh, by the European Medicines Agency are both safe and they're effective. Uh, also for the Omicron variant. They protect against serious disease and hospitalization. So the message has to be one very clear message. We must continue to vaccinate. And I use this occasion for all those who have not yet received their, their vaccinations or completed their vaccinations to please um, uh, be vaccinated because there is no doubt that vaccines pr protect against serious disease, hospitalization, and mortality. Thank you. Thank you. We have a, so a few minutes of time and one short question we can fit in if somebody has that. There is Julia Blomqvist again. The floor is yours. Hello, uh, again, Julia Blomqvist from London Media. Yes, I wanted to uh, still ask uh, about the short shortage of uh, medicines in Ukraine. For instance, there is a severe uh, shortage of insulin. Could you one more uh, tell um, uh, again, like what are the first concrete steps that EU will do to help Ukrainians in this medicine sh uh, shortage? Thank you, Julia. And please. We are supporting Ukraine with medicines, uh, all the member states and through the Union Civil Protection Mechanism. Um, we are supporting with medicines and with medical equipment. We have used the rescue use stockpiles, which were uh, in a number of member states to send medicines, and that includes uh, insulin. Uh, uh, so we are in very close contact with the Ukrainian authorities and are um, constantly supporting them, sending not only insulin, but also they have requested oncological medicines and other medicines. And these are being sent through the civil protection mechanism, through donations from member states, and through the rescue you stockpiles. Thank you. And uh, this is all we have time for today. And um, the press release is in your emails, dear representatives of the media. And uh, it can also be found from our website, stm.fi. Thank you so much, Minister Linden, Ms. Kiria Kides. Thank and thank you, dear journalists, for participating. Enjoy your day, and we'll see you soon again. Bye.